how to know the will of God for my life. Okay? How to know. Now, you have to remember, these are the two things. When I met Dr. Summerall and I went up to South Bend, these are the two things I told my wife before I left. I said, I got to know this. I got to know the will of God for my life. And I have to know when I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. If I know those two things, everything else will work out. Right? And so, now, and, you know, by the way, listen, most people won't move until they know the full thing. If you're going to wait till you know the full thing, you will never operate in faith. Faith, you, now you might know how it's going to end out, but I'm saying you're doing that by faith. But if you have to know all the details about how's this going to work, how's that going to happen, how's that, no, you've just entered into doubt. That is the perfect example of the definition of doubt, is having to know all the details. And so you can't see most people, well, I want to know, uh, who do you want me to go pray for? Give me a vision of somebody to go pray for. No, the more vision you get, the less faith you have. Amen. So he wants you stepping out in faith. He wants you to go expecting for God to either point them out or sometimes, you know, you need a word of knowledge. Sometimes you need a word of obvious. You say, what's a word of obvious? Somebody walking with a cane, somebody walking with a crutch, right? People say, well, how do I know if God wants me to pray for them? Uh, he's letting you see them with a cane or a crutch, right? So that's how you minister to them. Now, so when I, when I met Dr. Sumrall, that was what I asked. I didn't even get a chance to ask him. When I walked into his office, and you probably heard me tell this story before, but when I walked in there, I stood there and waited for a second, and he was writing, and he stopped and looked up at me, and he didn't even know my name at this point. We had, we, I mean, I had met him. I'm, I mean, I told him my name when I met him at the restaurant and shook his hand there. But and that's where he prayed for me. But at that same time, he never knew my name. And then a couple of months later, I'm sure he didn't remember my name because he never used my name when I walked into his office. But I'm standing there and he just stops and looks up and goes to know the will of God. Read the Bible. To be led by the spirit, do the Bible. Notice he didn't tell me to wait until I was led to do the Bible. He said, doing the Bible is being led. This, see, these are the things that people need to realize that will change Christianity because people don't live this way. But this is how we built the ministry. This, this is, these are the principles on which we have built the ministry because we see it this way. Now, real quick here. I keep saying that. but Now, notice this. Your nature, I just made some notes. Your nature leads you. What you do is your nature. Okay? Now, sometimes you make mistakes, and you did something stupid, but it was still your nature at that point. But you, and then afterwards you feel real bad about it, or whatever it is, and you repent, or whatever you have to do. But you did it because you were tempted to do it, but many times it's because that's your nature. Why? Because you were, that's how you've lived, and you haven't changed your nature. Everybody thinks that automatically your nature has changed. Your spirit has changed. But the Bible says that we become partakers of God's divine nature, which means you're not automatically a partaker of his nature. You are a partaker of his spirit. And if you have your, allow your mind to be renewed and you do the things the Bible says, then you can be a partaker of his divine nature. But now notice <clears throat> your nature leads you when Satan was your God. How many of you know Satan was your God before you got born again? All right. I know you don't like to admit it, but it was true. You can, it's okay. You can be ashamed of your, you know, past father. Okay? <laughs> Believe me, you want to blame him for the stupid stuff you did. Okay? So, when he, when he was your God, you obeyed him and didn't even ask him what he thought about it. And you did whatever he wanted. And the funny thing was, you thought it was you. You didn't even think about it being his nature. You thought it was, people say, well, you're doing this. That's because I want to. Well, who gave you the want to? The devil did. See, it was the spirit of your father in you, both working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Why? Because he copies God. And yet when you come to Christ, now all of a sudden, oh, I don't want to move. I'm not going to move unless God lose. He's got to move my hand. He's got to lead me. He's got to guide me. I can't do anything. Wow, you sure didn't do that with the devil. Why? Probably because you have more of his nature in him than you do God's nature in you now. Because when you get God's nature, you want to do God things. You want to lay hands on the sick. You want to speak in other tongues. You want to go out and cast out devils. If you don't want to cast out a devil, it's probably because you got one. They, they want to be friends. 
So you have to realize your, your nature has to be changed to be like God's. Amen? Good morning. Okay. Amen. All right. So I know I got to hurry. <clears throat> now, and that's how you should be led today is by the nature of your heavenly father. Now, let me give you something about being led. Psalm 32, verse 8. God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. I will guide you with my. Now, this is God talking. He said, I will. Now, get this. He says, I will instruct you and I will teach you, show you the way you're supposed to walk. And then I will guide you in that way with my eye. What does that mean? He's going to cause you to see things. And when you see things, you know, you're supposed to act on it. When you see a person sick and in need, you're supposed to act. He's going to guide you with his eye. The way he guided you with his eyes, he let you see them sick. This is how Jesus operated. When he sees a blind man, he says, okay, he's going to heal him. Lord, who, who, who sinned? Was it him or was it his parents? Jesus said, neither, but I'm here to do the work of God. Why? Because this guy, I saw him. And so I'm going to heal him. Why? Because my heavenly father is guiding me with my eye. I see, and I only do what I see my father do. Do you understand that? Now watch. He says, verse 9. Now here's the warning. Be ye not as the horse or as a mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Now get that. He said, I'm guiding you with my eye. Don't be like a horse. Don't be like a mule. What does that mean? Stubborn, refuse to move, all right? Don't be like a horse, don't be like a mule that has to have a bit put in its mouth and led around. You should be led by his eye and his nature. Do you get that? Well, I just don't feel led. I will get some led, that is, and I'll stack it up up here. And if you say that, I'll toss one to you. So you know what it feels like to feel led. <laughs> Amen. Isn't if you if you have the spirit of your father in you, you want to do the things of God. Yeah. I am giving you permission from the Bible to do the things that God has put in your heart. What that means is this. I'm not talking about just any old thing. I'm talking about the things it is written. Amen. And you can do those things at will anytime you see a need. Why? Because if you know who's in you, you know that there is not a need out there that you can't meet through the spirit of the one that's in you. Yes. So you don't have to be weight and told and led by bridle and reins and be told. See, that's how most people want to be led. I just want to be led. No, that's an excuse to do nothing. There, and I understand you can do good and you can even do wrong. You can mess things up and God will fix it. But he can't fix you're nothing. Do you get that? 